is hymn 483. Please uh, remain standing and sing with us.
may be seated. This time I'm going to ask our pastor to come forward. He's going to lead us in a pastoral prayer. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to be here in the Lord's house, the Lord's day amongst God's people, fellowshipping with fellow Christians. Amen. That's right. That's good. And happy. And by the way, I was thinking that the birthday party was going to be a surprise. <laughs> I would be surprised. Surprise! And, uh, I don't know, but um, if some of you want to, you might want to ask the folks, uh, come a little early to go fishing or a little after to go fishing or whatever. If you know, come a little early to go fishing or crabbing, you may do so. And uh, if you cannot find it, put it in your GPS. You'll be able to find it. And if some of you would like to um, meet here at the church and ride with, with us in cars, make it simpler and easier, then we'd be glad to do that. So just let us know. We have another couple weeks before that happens. August the 30th, 19... August the 30th, 1942. It's amazing, isn't it? A long time ago. That's great. I thank you, Lord, for the joy of knowing you personally as our Savior, having the certainty of salvation. We pray, God, for our military, give them safety as they strive to keep our country safe, law enforcement as they strive to keep our streets safe and secure, protect our law enforcement. We thank you, Lord, for the leaders of our country. May the Spirit of God speak to hearts, raise up among us Christians, Lord, May there be a revival in our land. We thank you, Lord, for the promises you give us, and we seek your will in this matter. Ask healing for those who are ill, especially blessing those who are having some serious char charges with health. Ask that your hand of healing will be above them. We thank you, Lord, for your grant, your hand of healing that is able to comfort and to restore and encourage. Speak to our hearts through the Word of God as we share the Word of God today. May you receive all honor and glory as we lift your name up and praise you as our Savior, as our Lord, as our Master, as our Keeper. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us. <coughs> our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, brother. All right, take your hymn books once again. We're all in the 480s. So this time it's 480. Even if you would stand single as near to the heart of God, the words will be available on the screens. Near to the heart of God. Four. Oh. 
there was some support given from the church and we wanted to thank you all for that Amen. and also just share a couple of things that we learned and as um, Bert said the wilds is a Christian camp in North Carolina and we were able to go there a couple weeks ago and everyone that goes to the wilds learns 1st Corinthians 10 31 and this was Luke's first chance to go up there so he's gonna he learned that during our week there so he wanted to share that with you okay so can you say for them 1st Corinthians 10 31 when we eat and drink, oh, so whatever you do, do it out in the glory of God. And during your week at the Wild Church, they say that verse every meal that you eat and um, so on everything that they sell, and they just really impress that upon the young people. Um, the gospel is presented so that everybody comes to know Christ that, that would, and also for the children who are saved to really deepen their relationship with the Lord. And the week that we were there, um, the speaker taught on Romans 6, and then after they teach you every day, the children go out and do a little God and I time and just deepen their study and really apply it personally to their lives. And the boys and I really loved the song that, that was written for this specific topic for this year at the Wilds. And we all were like, oh, we should sing that at church. So we kind of all kind of said that to each other. So unfortunately, what Wyatt always gets at the Wilds is a cold or sinus infection or something. So <laughs> he's not going to be singing with us this morning, but it really was a special song to each of us. And it's um, from Romans 6. And um, what they really, that, that is a very familiar chapter in the Bible, and I'm just going to read a couple verses. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So our, our speaker really impressed on the young people as you go further in that chapter. It says the word knowing, knowing, knowing on several different verses. Knowing who is your master once you're saved, okay? We, we know that we can sin and be forgiven, but we don't want to be a slave to sin anymore once we have been forgiven. So we're going to share this song with you.
very important thing, at least it was in my life. I was, I accept the Lord on, uh, in July, excuse me, in April of 1960, 1957. Uh, I accept the Lord on Thursday night, and uh, uh, my dad's sister said, if you go to camp, I'll pay the way, which was a lot of money back then, $15. And a lot of times that year, the Lord spoke my heart very distinctly when I was by myself, pondering, the Lord spoke my heart very distinctly, and I was called into the ministry. So I'm a very strong believer in youth camp, this is for years ago, and spent a week with the Lord. In the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 1, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Hmm. Then the presidents and the princes those carefully, sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against his concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves together and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains and the, had consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it might be no charge according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not, that there'll be no change according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. Wherefore King Darius signed in writing and decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did all times. Then these men assembled and found David, Daniel praying, making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within thirty days save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which offereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captive of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Thank you, Lord, for your word of God. Ask your blessings as we start the scripture together. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Daniel is a type of Israel. <coughs> in text. Keep that in mind as we progress through. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 3. So listen carefully. In that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burn themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. 
though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Does that ring any bell today's happenings? Verse 4, In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Verse 5, And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts their God. Go to verse 6. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire upon the wood and a torch of fire in the sheep, and they shall devour all the people round about. And Jerusalem shall be inherited, inhabited again in his, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Journey down to verse number 10. And I will pour upon the house of Daniel and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Go to the book of John, you'll find them talking about Jesus Christ, whom they pierced, okay? So who are they talking about? They're talking about Jesus Christ here. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Listen to this carefully. And they shall mourn for him. Now these are the Jewish people coming to Christ. That's in the happening stage. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Weeping meaning. Weeping. The Jewish nation will turn to Christ and weep for him. So we find here that this is Jerusalem clearly defined in Zechariah. We see clearly here that Israel, okay, has been, has been and is being tossed into the lion's den. Okay. And we find here that King Darius is a type of Gentile believers and that he mourned and wept for the case of Daniel. So this is talking about things from, that are in the making, yet to happen, a lot of it. Most of you do not remember, but I remember distinctly the Seven Day War of 1967, and how it speaks of blindness, how that was a type of what is yet to come in a greater way, how that, for example, Egypt had lost all their communication with the pilots during that time, and a lot of miraculous things happened and brought about Jerusalem, Judea, becoming a greater nation as a result of that seven-day war when all the powers around them were arming against them. So we're talking about something that we talked about last Sunday. Do you remember that verse if you back up in the, in the book of Daniel and you'll find there in Daniel chapter 4, verse number 3. You were supposed to memorize this. And if you can quote this, then you'll get a special blessing. How great are thy signs, and how mighty are thy wonders. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Thy dominion is from generation to generation. Thy dominion, the word of God, is just as solid today as it was in the days of Daniel. We find the wonders of that day are yet wonders of happening in your day and our day. Great and marvelous things do happen by the hand of God. How great are thy signs, Daniel and the lion's den. Can you imagine any greater sign? The very first story I ever read as a little child with my story, Bible story book, was the story of Daniel, the lion's den. What a sign, Daniel and the lion's den. We're going to look at Daniel for a little while. We say it, we find that very distinctly said he was thrown in the lion's den because he was faithful to God. He prayed three times a day. He was faithful to God. I thank Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says, who hath enabled me, counting me faithful, 
putting me in the ministry. That is the bottom line, faithful. Those who are faithful in church, faithful in attendance, faithful in tithing, faithful in serving, faithful, faithful in witnessing, faithful in sharing the gospel on every occasion. Faithful. Faithful. Daniel was a faithful man. Okay? We find some of the prodigies of Daniel in reference to defining him. Wonderful, amazing, enormous, just beyond measure. We find how great are the signs. We see as we go back to Daniel chapter 1 as he was hauled off into uh, Babylon and held captive that he, and we find in verse 8 a very, very important uh, message. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat. Purposed in his heart. They were, the king was assigning him certain food, so forth, and Daniel said, no, I, I don't want to do this. And, and uh, his overseer said, look, that's going to get me in trouble. You've got to do this. And he said, well, let's try it for 10 days, see what happens. And they tried for 10 days, and they were a whole lot better off. Because Daniel purposed, Daniel made up his mind. I am going to live a life that's going to be pleasing to God. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter where I am, he purposed in his heart. He made up his mind. He made up his mind. We find Paul talks about this in Acts 24, verse 14. Acts 24, verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way of which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the word of God. That Paul made the same decision that Daniel did. Believing all things which are written in the word of God, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both the just and the unjust. Uh -oh. And herein do I ex exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense to God and to man. A void of offense. You know, it's important that we realize how it's essential that we decide. Decide. There are people today who decided not to go to church, but to take in a day of pleasure, and they do this probably every Sunday. I don't know. I don't. But you know, they say, well, I don't, I can worship. No. Let's, let's go back and do a little thinking. You ever heard of a man named Ishmael? <clears throat> Who was Ishmael? He was a man born of the flesh. His mother, Hagar, who was an Egyptian. Sarah seemingly couldn't have children. She was pushing nine years old. And so she had a plan. Abraham, Abraham as he was called at the time, uh, let's have a child with my, my servant, Hagar. And so Ishmael comes along. A symbol of the pleasure of the flesh. If you read the story. Not waiting on God, but making avenues through the flesh. Later we find Isaac is born, okay? And you'll find in Genesis 21 verse 9 that Ishmael and Hagar mocked Sarah and Isaac. Whose side are those who mock people? For those of you who bounced out of bed yesterday morning and came charging over here for the early morning service, you were taught this in the book of Psalms. Saturday morning, men's breakfast. Bill did a good job this past Saturday. Amen. Notice two things. We find in that text, Psalms 42, verse 3. My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is thy God? Mocking. Mocking. We believe the Lord will come again. But they are those who mock us. Okay? We find in verse 10, As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies will reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Mocking, mocking, 
mocking. Be prepared if you decide to do what Daniel decided to do, to be mocked, be ridiculed, to have a war team meet in their war room and make a plot to try to take you down. That's what happened to Daniel. The powers to be met in their war room and made their plans to take Daniel down. In the book of Galatians chapter 4, run through this verse, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Okay? Remember that. Isaac came as a child of promise. Ishmael did not. Ishmael came as of the flesh. Isaac came as a, as a promise. What is our salvation based on? It's based on the promise of our Savior Jesus Christ that was promised to us all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Okay? The promise. Paul talks about this as he's ministering to the folks at Galatia. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he was born after the flesh, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so is now. Nevertheless, what shall, nevertheless, what saith the scriptures? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free man, free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. We all sing about freedom in America. And I love freedom, don't you? Yeah, we all do. I, I, in the story of writing, and I've, and I've written the stories of my life, and the first thing I write off is how I was so blessed to be raised by mommy, by mommy and a daddy who worked real hard to have a farm so we might enjoy, this is, listen carefully, that we may have, that we might enjoy the freedom of the farm. We were indeed free on that farm. We all enjoyed doing what we did, even though it's four o'clock in the morning or sometimes six or seven or eight o'clock at night. We've had the freedom of that farm. Now, no one is free except they, have, they are born again Christians. Those who are not Christians are under the bondage of sin and the consequences of sin and the results of sin. Ishmael was not born of a free woman. Okay? Isaac was. Those today who are not born again Christians, not in fellowship in the Lord's house, not enjoying the blessedness of being among God's children, they're not free people. They're held in bondage by the quest of the flesh that is never satisfied. You ask Solomon. He had it all. Vanity and vanity is all is vanity. Have you ever met someone who was extremely wealthy and satisfied with things? You know, the, you've probably seen the little bumper sticker, he that dies with the most toys, let me see, how did it go? Wins. He who has the most toys are free. Wins. Wins. that nature. But the world does mock us as Christians. And Daniel had enough perception to understand this, and Daniel made up his mind that he himself was going to set himself aside to serve God and him alone. And so he purposed in his heart. He made up his mind. He realized he was going to be where that crowd was, you know, where they were coming from. We find that it's very interesting when, where Adam was, where Adam was, was his image, there he longs for me to be. His image, holiness for you and me. Our hearts long to be what my Lord wants for us. Mm. He's, yes, his alone, shining in his righteousness. <clears throat> shining in his righteousness. Daniel made up his mind. Okay. When I was coming up, Going to church was not an option. And we always were given a quarter a week with our salary. And we were expected to give some to church. Sometimes we gave it all. Because it was just a quarter. Being faithful to the Lord. Faithful to a ministry. Faithful to 
you know, somebody asked, I was asked a while back, how do y'all choose your missionaries? We choose missionaries who are soul winners and who are active in a local church, anchored in a local church, serving in a local church, ministering in a local church. Daniel purpose in his heart. He wanted what? He wanted, he wanted the best that God had for him. As we look at some of his projects, we find his wonders, the amazement of this man, Daniel. We find how great are his signs. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. He had an excellent spirit. We find in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit. He was a type of Christ in this sense. But our Lord had an excellent spirit. Our Lord uh, met with a man named Nathaniel. And we find that story in the book of John. Of Philip told him about Jesus and that he was from Nazareth and Nathaniel says that nothing good come from that place. Um, from, um, and so anyhow the conversation goes on but, but the Lord approaches him and you'll find this in the book of John and uh, he speaks complimentary of this man Nathaniel and um, Nathaniel says well you know, how do you know me? How do you know I'm a, a just and honest Good about God the man, and this is what the Lord said of him. How do you know this? And David and Jesus said, Because I, I saw you beneath the, the fig tree. See, the children of Israel were promised a land of, of milk and honey. When I was in Israel, I was made aware of how many fig trees there are there. And the, our guide said, Here's where the milk comes from. And you pick a fig and you see milk come out. That's where Nathaniel was. And it was before daylight. And he was there praying. And the Lord knew his heart because he was. And when you are praying, the Lord knows your heart. So he was praying beneath the fig tree. Did you know that there's more iron and calcium in a fig than perhaps any other food source you get? And did you know... If you pick up a thing that's not right, it's bitter. Because of the iron and the calcium, it's not <laughs> delightful food. But then as it gets ripe, it's filled with sugar. Then it becomes delightful. Something desires of the heart. So we find our Lord a delightful person. The woman the well. Scripture says he needed to go to Sychar. There were Samaritans there, and most Jews didn't do that. They crossed Jordan and went up, and they came back across Jordan. They, they avoided that place because there were mixed, mixed belief people there. There were folks who were, and so they were not looked upon as nice people. And, but our Lord had a purpose to go to Sychar because, because there was a woman there that was in deep sin and needed to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. He purposed himself at the well. The disciples go into town to get food, and, and here comes the woman. And he asked her to give him drink. You, you Jewish, you ask a Samaritan to give you drink? Don't you know that Jews don't talk to Samaritans, especially women? Or said if you. Ask me, I'd give you a drink. If you give me a drink, you wouldn't have a bucket. I got the bucket. You see the sarcasm? But the Lord says, But if thou knewest, okay. but if thou knewest, it's so important that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and know the sweetness of his heart, yeah. and how he lovingly not reacted. Not came back with a sharp tongue of bitterness, like a raw green fig, but as a sweet, ripe fig, he lovingly said, If you knew, as he conversed with her, 
she refers to a window that someday the Messiah is going to come. And the Lord said, that's who I am. Amen. She kicked her heels up and went back to town, kicking her heels up. And the whole town came out. And they all came out. And the Lord stayed there for several days and both became believers. Because the Lord had his sweet spirit. Daniel had his sweet spirit. A sweet disposition. Every Christian should have. Well, let's talk some trees. You know what a bow tree is? A bow tree is where Buddha claims he got his vision of his religion. Reincarnation. Would you like that challenge? Then there is the fig tree, and that is where Nathaniel was, and he came to know Jesus Christ as his Savior through that experience. But the tree of all is the tree of Calvary. Right? That's the tree we are to find ourselves beneath. Our Lord had a sweet disposition. Daniel had a sweet disposition. We find Daniel's prodigies, and as we look at them, the, the, the wonders of it all, the amazement of this man. You go back, how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion, his authority, his word, is from generation to generation. Hide the word of God in your heart. Hide the word of God in your heart. Hide the word of God in your heart. Go to Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, and he knelt upon on his knees up three times a day and prayed. And gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. You see, with Daniel, nothing had changed. Nothing had changed. No matter what laws, regulations the world makes, no matter what cultural changes our nation goes through, no matter what cultural behaviors are re embraced by, by the inclusive people. God's word never changes. Amen. God's man never changes, or God's woman never changes. Amen. Daniel did not change a bit. He had purpose in his heart. He made up his mind. He developed a sweet, loving spirit. He was kind and always kind and showing kindness, except when he dealt with people who were mocking and rebelling and refused to believe on Lord Jesus Christ and so forth and so on. When they turned the temple <laughs> into a place of wealth to gain and steal, steal money from the people, he went in the very first week of his ministry and the very last week of his ministry and cleaned house. Because religious people who mocked truth were gaining wealth through their manipulous ways of selling these sacrifices through temple money, making great gains. Every time they did this, they would add more gold to their temple. I'm told that the vines that went up, creeping up over that temple, as they came up, the waist was as huge as a man's waist. And as it grew up over the temple, glittering gold, the doors changed on gold. When Jesus, with some of the disciples, were sitting in the Mount of Olives, and they're looking at the sun glittering on all that gold. They were marveling what a beautiful temple that is. And our Lord said, tear it down in three days. I was told. You go to Jerusalem today and you look down behind, um, just off the wall of the plateau that Herod had built so that they built all this on. You'll see stones as huge as cars. Those were the stones of that temple. You know why they're torn down? Because of that gold. Rome needs some gold. They had a civil war, and the trade was a little low, and they said, we know where some gold is. You see, <coughs> Ishmael, the flesh, never satisfies. Today there are people who are deeply engraved into, uh, ingrained into their religious activities called the religion of Ishmaelism. 
Not that of promise, promise, but that of pleasure. Of pleasure. We look last of all, how great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. And so Daniel realizes nothing's changed. God still is wrong. His dominion is from generation to generation. God was in authority before. He is he was, uh, he was in position of authority then and is now. And so it is what God is going to do in Jerusalem someday. I read to you the prophecy okay, earlier. What God is doing. Oh, we think in terms of their doom. I'm sure that those people in the days of Daniel thought, boy, he's doomed now. I'm sure those lions hadn't been fed in a week. They are starving to death. Soon as his shadow hits the floor of that dungeon, he'll be gobbled up. No. Okay. His dominion is from generation to generation. Nothing has changed. We go back to Psalms 42, verse number 7. Deep calleth unto deep as the voice of the water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone with me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me. And his prayer to the God of life. Sunday, Saturday morning we're talking about singing the Psalms. You know, and, and share, different ones that would share the song that was sort of like ringing in your mind that week. And, and the one that would ring in my mind would redeem it while I up to proclaim it. And uh, Bill, what was the song on your mind? You don't remember? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I was visiting the Nard's dear wife before she passed. And uh, she was in a fetal position and not responding, but her little mouth was going. And I leaned down real close. One day I was there by myself and I said, I'm going to try to figure out what she's saying. So I leaned down real, real close to listen to what she was saying. And she was mumbling, Jesus loves me, this I know. Over and over again. What song is on your heart? Nothing has changed. See back, if we go back to our text in uh, chapter 42, verse 7, verse 8. Verse 9, I shall say unto, the, I shall say unto God my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the opposition of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Notice what verse 7 says. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquitted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall pr yet praise him. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him. Who is the help of my countenance. And my God. He is our help. He is our strength. <coughs> Worry doesn't buy anything. Worry doesn't make house payments. Worry doesn't do anything for you but bring you help. But there is hope, there is strength. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Many are the afflictions. Excuse me, I meant to bring this up. Keep with me. Read you a few verses. And this is in Psalm, this is in page 478, if you'd like to follow with me. 478. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way when sorrow like sea like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul Amen Horatio Spaper Kindled words he was a very wealthy man in Chicago in Windy City 
for the good friend of Dwight Moody. A fire swept that city and he lost all his wealth. His son, four years old, died of a fever. Dwight Moody was in England preaching the crusade. And there was such heaviness to so decide to send his wife and three daughters to England and let them be there on the Dwight Moody's preachings and get away from all the stress he's dealing with and, and find some encouragement. En route, there was a collision at sea. He later received a wire from her as she arrived in England, <laughs> saved alone. He had now lost his three daughters. He quickly boarded a ship. The captain shared with them that we're now about where that vessel went down. He went into the chamber and he penned these words. It is well with my soul. And though Satan should buffet, though trials shall come, let this blessed assurance, let this blessed assurance control that Christ regarded my helpless estate. Let this bliss of assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate. Our Lord is in charge. Great signs. Daniel is one of those signs. How great are his signs. How mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. I ask you a question. How did he have the strength to go and pen those words? Where did that come from? It didn't come from the flesh. I can tell you that. Perhaps this is where it came from. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You notice his song reference to the soul. For since by man cometh death, by man cometh also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first. Then he cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God. His kingdom is everlasting. His dominion is from generation to generation. Here's something that yet to happen real soon. We find this in Revelation chapter 5, verse number 12. Well, go to verse 11. And I behold and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders meaning all the church believers, and number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now, don't you want to be there? Amen. Amen. Isn't that your hope? Amen. That is the day. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Worthy is the Lamb. Daniel purposed in his heart, and he continued that course. He became a blessing, had a sweet spirit, and he persevered, even in the midst of trials. Yes, he was thrown into the lion's den. But God spared his life. Were there, were there a lion something wrong with them? No. All those who were his enemies, King Darius, had them lured into the den. The Bible says they were devoured before their feet could touch the floor of the den. <coughs> God is on his throne. He is our hope. He is our stay. Remember, nothing changes. His dominion is unto generation and generation. Cleave to the word of God. Purpose in your heart. Make up your mind. Serve the Lord. 
and you'd be glad you did. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of knowing you as our Savior. Thank you for the challenge you've given to us in life. Sometimes, Lord, things are very, very challenging, but we thank you, Lord, for the bliss that we find in Christ. If any here did not know Christ as their Savior, Lord, we open the altar of salvation that they may come and receive you to their hearts. Any of you would like to rededicate their heart, Lord, we always open that for rededication. Help us each, Lord, to purpose in our hearts to serve you and serve you alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.